It's the final tune-up before the ACC tournament. And for some teams, the NCAA tournament on this final ACC Sunday of the regular season. Today, an important doubleheader. Game one, the red-hot Virginia Cavaliers look to keep it rolling as they seek a win versus a dangerous and ranked team, number eight, NC State. In game two, Boston College having their best ACC season ever with 10 wins in conference. Try for one more on the road as they face off against Syracuse. The ACC regular season wraps up today. Stay with us as we bring you all the action. This is ACC College Hoops from Charlottesville, Virginia, John Paul Jones Arena. Longtime ACC rivals, NC State and Virginia. Meeting for the 78th time, NC State number eight in the country. They've already beaten the Cavaliers. The teams met earlier this year in Raleigh. It is so great to have you with us for our game this afternoon on ACC College Hoops. Tom Wormy along with Kelly Dale. It is the final day of the regular season. So much to be decided as far as seedings are concerned for our tournament next week. But this season has been so exciting and entertaining all year long, Kelly. Yeah, I don't think there's ever been a season where we've had this much parity in the ACC. And it's hard to believe that after today, we will have those seedings set for that tournament starting Wednesday. This one, obviously, a big one for Virginia in terms of seeding. We can't wait to get there. Here is what the bracket looks like to start the day. We can tell you that Louisville has that number one seed. NC State has the number two seed. Because of the Virginia Tech loss to Louisville today, Duke will be three or four, but a lot to be decided in Virginia trying to avoid that first day of play, Kelly. Yeah, you absolutely want to get that first bye going into the second day, and a lot will have to happen in order for that to take place. In our game today, we've got a couple of players who are certainly ACC Player of the Year candidates, and we'll start with NC State, and Alisa Kinane leads the league in double-doubles this season, a consistent score. She's just a fraction below averaging a double-double double for the season you can see she leads with those 13 double doubles and when opposing players get on the inside and try to defend her she is going to challenge them and most of the time she's going to get to the free throw line well she's made herself such a focal point inside the way she finishes with either hand is tremendous she goes after the boards she's phenomenal inside that paint look at the deep position that she's able to get just a quick turn and score but she can also hit that outside jumper big reason why they're number eight in the nation cross the way for virginia Jocelyn Willoughby, one of the seniors honored today on Senior Day here in Charlottesville. She's shown off the handles here. She has shown off her scoring ability all season long, almost 20 points per game, best in the conference. And look at that stat at the bottom. 126 career games, she started them all. She's one of the most versatile players in all of the Atlantic Coast Conference. She can play the outside position. She can play the inside position. She's terrific on the defensive end and easily one of the best scorers in the country and number one in ACC play. Toyota starting lineups to Saunt, Willoughby, and Yablonowski, three of the seniors honored prior to the game. And the Toyota starting lineups for the NC State Wolfpack. We told you about Kinane, but watch for Aislinn Ace Kone, 280 career made three pointers, and that is second in NC State women's basketball history. And the pack on the road in the black and red have the first possession of our game from Charlottesville. So glad that you are with us for ACC women's basketball. Virginia will mix it up defensively, but I think most of the time we'll see them in that man-to-man -man and watch for those double teams. They'll come quickly. Deep into the shot clock. It's down to seven out of bounds and to Virginia. Jakia Brown-Turner trying to make her move in the quarter in front of that Virginia bench. We mentioned the Cavaliers. Red hot coming on strong in the latter stages of the season. They've won five of their last seven games. Missed from Trois. Cavs with 13 and 15 and 8 and 9 in conference play. NC State is 24 and 4. Well defended on that position. Here's Toussaint. Filling the lane, laying it up, and just missing, but getting fouled is Jocelyn Willoughby to the free throw line. Something ha magical happens on senior day, and look at the two seniors finding each other in transition. These players are going to play with a lot of energy today. I
think you're going to see the same kind of performance that we saw against Virginia Tech, where both Willoughby and Toussaint both scored 29 points in that outing. There is a lot on the line today against NC State. About 25 points to lead the team in Raleigh in a losing effort. She was perfect from the free throw line, and she's got the Cavs on the board early in the first quarter. That's exactly what Virginia wants to do. They want to get out and run in transition. They saw on film that this is what Duke did against NC State, and they were successful. Three-pointer from NC State, and it's the ace. That's what killed them in the first meeting. NC State had 11 threes in that game. They've got to find shooters. An 80-60 win at home for the Pack in early January. They led the entire game, and as Kelly mentioned, made 11 threes, and here they go again with Ace Cody. One of the best three-point shooters in this conference. Just a quick step back, puts it down. Koenig picked up that previous foul for NC State. for Yablonowski, the senior from Luxembourg. They, along with Felicia Iotin, out with a medical condition and unable to play this year. The four seniors honored prior to the game, and NC State hits another one. Great look, reading the screen. She goes underneath, and Jakia Brown-Turner makes a pay. 38th May 3 of the season for Brown-Turner. Knocked away, here's Crutchfield. NC State coming off the win Thursday at home in their final regular season home game. That against the Syracuse Orange and a 69-60 win. And free throws upcoming on the drive. NC State started this season with 14 straight wins. Best record in school history through 23 games. They were 22-1. and one. They have struggled just a little bit since, though, with two and three record. Under Westmore in his seventh season as the head coach of the NC State program. Talked to Westmore this morning and shoot around and asked him about those couple losses. And he had a really casual response about it. He said, hey, I'm not worried about it. And we had a little bit of a lull, but we're back to playing the way that we need to play. But what he said is, we've got to hit shots. That is when we're at our best. Toussaint trying to hit a shot, and she does it. It is a two inside the line for Toussaint. Virginia had attacked on almost every other possession, so that is what opened up the outside look for Toussaint there. She struggled in their most recent game against Pittsburgh, just four points, five rebounds, and missed all three of her three-point chances. You got a mismatch inside. Toussaint on Elisa Kinane. Get her the ball. Gonna go to Crutchfield on the wing for three, and she cashes in. That works as well. <laughs> three threes now for NC State. Nobody makes more per game in the ACC than NC State. They make over eight threes per game to lead the way in the conference. That's inside the line for a two for Carol Miller. Just firing away, and it's Koenig from the other side this time, and the result is the same for number one in black. And if you're Tina Thompson, you're shaking your head right now because that's at the top of the scouting report. Find shooters in transition. This is not the way that they want to defend the three-point line. Willoughby stop and start on the baseline. Feeds it on back to Miller. Second straight field goal for Miller. Carol Miller has averaged double figures in her last two games, so coming into this game with a lot of confidence. So Koenig has made both of her three-point attempts for NC State. She's now up to 282 threes in her career, second most in school history. Willoughby wants to run one on three, cut off by the defending of Koenig for the moment. Toussaint. Miller. Baseline using the rim and backboard, and it's in for Miller. You got to keep going to the freshman. She came to play six quick points for Carol Miller. So Virginia's now four of four from the floor. NC State is four for five in shooting. A red. 
red hot start by both of these teams. Honig, Willoughby, fall away short. Defended per perfectly there by Jocelyn Willoughby. What an effort. Willoughby wants to get to the rim. Crutchfield got in her way. Jones tried to dump it off to Kadane, and it was kicked by Jablonowski. Jocelyn Willoughby, I mentioned that she is the most versatile player on the floor. She can guard your point guard. She can guard your post player. How about that defense right there ends up with the rebound to go in transition? Not just a score at 19.8 points per game and best for the ACC. She had 20 points in that most recent game against Pittsburgh to lead the team. That was a win on Thursday. Here in Charlottesville, 66-55, and Virginia shot 40% as a team. NC State made eight threes in its victory against Syracuse on Thursday on its home floor. Reynolds Coliseum. They tried to thread it to Kinane. It was knocked away. Willoughby dropped it off. The layup will drop. Virginia on their own as Twa has two. Virginia completely in sync with each other right now. The passing has been phenomenal in the open court. It is a 6-0 Cavalier run. Knocked away. Kornagay Lucas. One on two. She got it to Willoughby for the layup. How did that get to Willoughby? Unbelievable. Kornagay Lucas, look at the scoring run. 8 nothing right now by the Cavaliers. Virginia has taken a 15-14 lead in the first quarter. And the Cavs are 6 of 7 from the floor. Koenig. And the foul is against NC State. Don't worry about that ranking of NC State. Virginia came to play. They're off in transition. They're doing everything they can to keep their hopes alive of a sixth straight home win. First quarter of action between the pack and the Cavs. It's a one-point lead for Virginia. Time to check out the four keys to the game with Kelly Dale. It's really easy for NC State. They just want to hit shots. That's what Wes Moore said. When they went on that drought and they were losing games, they were not hitting shots consistently. And then for Virginia, they need to lock down defensively. Right now, they're struggling at guarding that three-point line because NC State has been phenomenal. They've got to get better from there. But how about this? Four of four right now from three-point land. Everybody getting involved on this one. Virginia's got to do a better job at finding players, getting a hand up in the face, and at least making them think that that three-point shot is not open. Wolfpack shooting 35% from beyond the arc this season. That is second best to the ACC. Ace Koenig with a couple of three-pointers. Brown Turner has one in. Crutchfield also has one. Teams played on January 5th, a 20-point win for NC State. Shot 49% of the game, dominated the boards, distributed the basketball, and led the entire game. They've won four of the last five meetings against their ACC rivals, the Virginia Cavaliers. NC State's won two in a row in this series, including the game we highlighted just a moment ago. That's very characteristic of this NC State Wolfpack team. High percentage from the field, high assist number. They're a very high IQ team. Kinane tries to save it on the end line. It goes out of bounds and will stay with Virginia. Kinane has not put up a shot yet. Virginia has done a great job defensively at shutting her down. Kinane had a double-double in that meeting earlier this season with 26 points and 10 rebounds and didn't miss a free throw. Went 10 for 10. Not in the box score yet as far as scoring is concerned. And the shot clock is down to 7. It's a soft right to Koenig. Boyd tried to get around her defender. Yablonowski held her ground. Here's Willoughby. Difficult attempt from Willoughby. Second chance. Held ball situation of the arrow. 
is going to favor Virginia. Heavy contact inside as Willoughby trying to get to the rim. Oh, it shows you the strength of this kid. Look at her. Three defenders around her as she goes inside. By the way, I think she should have stopped and popped right there. Don't go into the defense. But even so, look at that. She's still able to maintain her possession on the ball with three people around her. Cavaliers trying to build on an 8-0 run. We've got the one-point lead as we close in on three minutes to go in our first quarter. On the final day of the regular season for ACC women's basketball. On to Greensboro next week. Twice. Willoughby scrapping for the rebound with Boyd, and the foul is going to go against Willoughby. Mark Hardcastle right on top of the call. He's joined by Angela Lewis and Jeffrey Smith, our officiating crew this afternoon here in Charlottesville. I was just thinking the only way to neutralize Jocelyn Willoughby would be to get her in foul trouble. That's only her first, but that could be a focal point. And look at the double team off the screen. Canane double team right back out to Ely. Shot clock at 10 for Brown Turner. Kanane, offensive glass, she's got it, and Kanane is going to the line for the back. A lot of contact in there. First of all, the kick out inside, the drive. Watch this double team come. Look at the patience. Yablonowski comes at the right time, forces Kanane to kick it out, and then the drive back inside. That is what has been effective in the last few possessions for NC State. Kanane just all over the offensive board. That is a rare miss from Kanane. Fifth in the conference from the free throw line at 81%. But it's off of the Cavaliers, and NC State will get another chance. And there we go. Jocelyn Willoughby will go to the bench with two fouls. That is a huge turn of events for Virginia. So Willoughby leaves the game with four points. Right now, Miller is the leading scorer for Virginia with six. Koenig has six for NC State. That's a good luck. Take that any time. Lisa Kinane turning, going right over the front of the rim, just couldn't put it down. So Sean, fancy dribble. Yeah, Wolanowski, offensive glass. So with Willoughby out, players like Yablonowski have to step up. Williams is now in the game. That's the freshman. Lisa Yablonowski coming off a 15-point performance against Pittsburgh. Gets knocked away from Kanane. Williams. There was contact, and Williams should be going to the free-throw line for Virginia. Cavaliers 13 and 15 this season for second-year head coach Tina Thompson. We told you that NC State makes the most threes per game. Virginia, conversely, makes the fewest threes per game. This is the freshman, Williams, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Highly regarded out of high school, where she scored over 3,000 points in her high school career. 69% free throw shooter. A couple of times has been awarded the ACC Freshman of the Week. She's one of the few freshmen on this team that can put up some big numbers. Fighting back from a lower leg injury, she went for the fake by Koenig, but was able to brace Koenig on the fall, and the foul will be against Williams. Glad to see Koenig get up and be okay on that one. That was a tough collision. Fourth team foul on the Cavs. NC State made it all the way to the semis of the tournament last year. Koenig out of the corner in rhythm and rip of the ropes for NC State. I'm not sure how you miss Aislinn Koenig on the baseline in that out-of-bounds play. So Koenig now three for three from long distance. Miller going baseline. Show and go, Carol Miller. I thought this was senior night. Looking like freshman night right now. Carol Miller gets her defender off the ground for that one. Eight points now for Miller. She hasn't missed a shot. She's four for four from the floor for Virginia. Shot clock ticking down to six. And it is 
a shot clock violation. What a 55 seconds to go in the first quarter. What a terrific defensive series right there. 30 seconds of great defense. But check out the freshman. Gets her defender up in the air. Goes in off the glass. She has been a huge bright spot for this Virginia team. Who knew she'd come in and put up these kind of points early? Double digits against Pittsburgh. 12 points for Miller for the freshman from Alexandria, Virginia, who averages six points per game. She's already above that in the first quarter with eight. This is Williams trying to extend the range. Can't do it. Pulled down by Cassell. Off the fingertips of Kayla Jones and out of bounds. And again, the Virginia defense making NC State really hurry up and try to look for shots that are not necessarily within their offense. They've come with a great play game plan and have been executing it very well in this first quarter. Seven turnovers in the first quarter for NC State. Forced by that Virginia D with the game clock now down to seven for Toussaint. Trying to go down the line, lost it out of bounds, and NC State will have 5.8 seconds with which to work at the end of this first quarter. Ely. The indication is double dribble. And another turnover for NC State. This is uncharacteristic of this team. Williams did not get the shot away. It would not have counted. NC State did not miss a three-point attempt in this quarter, but Carol Miller came up with eight points. Ace Koenig was three for three from long distance. What a first quarter. It's a two-point game in Charlottesville. ACC College Hoops is brought to you by the Bojangler, Bojangles Fish Sandwich. And LS Tractor. Visit us at lstractorusa.com. We are on the grounds of the University of Virginia. Founded by Thomas Jefferson, Cavs, and Pack, and it's senior day for Jocelyn Willoughby and three of her teammates. One of the all-time best to wear a Virginia uniform with her parents. We told you 126 career games and all-starts. Dominic Toussaint. The senior from Staten Island, New York, with her family. And Lisa Yablonowski, the senior from Luxembourg, a country the size of Rhode Island. And some tears of emotion. Felicia Ioton as well, unable to play this season because of a medical condition, but a part of this Virginia program and a big part of it as they get a well-deserved round of applause from the folks in attendance on this Sunday in Charlottesville. What a great moment that is, Kelly. You've been through that. There's a lot of emotion, a very special day for all those players and the seniors on NC State as well. Yeah, there's nothing like it. And, and it's one of those difficult days because there's a lot of emotion wrapped up in it. And then you're expected to come out and play a game, you know? Forget about 40 minutes of basketball in front of you as you are playing your last game of your career on your home floor. and. Those four have had quite a career here at Virginia. Willoughby picked up two fouls in that first quarter. Virginia yet to make a three there, 0 for the four. That's to stop the miss. Shamira Williams, the freshman, has the board. Virginia put together such an impressive first quarter. Seven assists on eight made field goals. Second chance. Williams fighting inside with the bigger players. She didn't play in that game against Pittsburgh, but she's back again today, and they need her. NC State has turned it over nine times to just one for Virginia so far in our game. Opening moments of our second quarter. This is Jones, spot up and hit. NC State already has the number two seed in our tournament next week. Second straight year with a double bye. And their best seeding since 1990 when they were the number one seed, but lost in the finals to Virginia in overtime back in 1990. Toussaint driving. Offensive foul as Toussaint came through the lane. We mentioned the great play of some freshmen for Virginia. 
Check out the effort here by Williams. She misses, gets her own rebound, the fake, and then the finish by the freshman. She and Carol King, or excuse me, but Carol Miller, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Both have done a terrific job playing in this game. Artist Carol King. There we go. Recording artist Carol King. She, she could have been a baller. Maybe that's what I was <laughs> alluding to. Deflected, saved by Crutchfield. Shot clock at 10. Jones again, another jumper. NC State keeps it alive. Good hustle inside there by Cassell. Virginia is making them work for every shot, except the three-point line. That's where they're perfect right now. Six for six from the three-point line. Kayla Jones getting into the act on the three-pointers. Jones is a double-digit scorer this season, averaging just over 10 points per game. Right now, she's got five and two of three from the floor, including that three just a moment ago. Cornegay Lucas ran into a roadblock. Had to find Williams with the shot clock winding down. Cassell spins it in, a counterclockwise swirl. And it drops seven for seven from long range for NC State. They've only made two shots inside the three-point line right now. That is the only thing that has been consistent for them has been that outside look. The lead four inside of seven minutes to go. NC State in front and on an 8-0 run against the Cavs with the shot clock at five for Williams. Ball was knocked away and then subsequently kicked, according to Angela Lewis. So when your two isn't working, you might as well just go ahead and knock it down from outside. How about that roll around the rim? Yeah, she knew it. The big smile after that three. The cell to the bench. Run down by Miller. A lot of players have already gone in for NC State. I think Wes Moore has kind of sent a message to his team, to his starters in particular, that they need to come and play. Eight turnovers in the first quarter is not going to cut it for him. Deep into the shot clock for two shot. Catch and release, and it's on net. That's where she's best. Dominic Toussaint. Jones the miss, Kanane. Offensive glass, it spins off for Kanane. Just not used to seeing Kanane miss any of those shots inside. She has just two points so far. Toussaint misfires. The rebound is Crutchfield. Virginia 0 for 5 on three point attempts so far in the first half. At the other end of the floor, NC State cannot miss. Grace Hunter fires away and hits a three, and they're eight for eight. I mean, you gotta be kidding me from the three-point line. I don't know if I've ever seen a game with this much consistency early on from three-point land. They are basically already at their average for made threes in an entire game, which is the best in the conference. That one. Still not sure who it's off. I mean, that's a situation where you've got to have your hand in the face of a shooter. It's not enough to be there on the catch. Your hand has to be up and extended for that shooter to even think about passing the ball. And they're going to give this ball, it looks like, to Virginia. Angela Lewis and Jeffrey Smith, bottom left of your screen. Good they defense. confer and decide it is, in fact, Virginia basketball. Great defense there by Carol Miller to defend in the backcourt. Wow. What a miss from three. I'm not sure I like that look. Virginia has struggled the last few possessions. You got to go to the basket. That's what's been working. Win today would set the school record for ACC victories, and that's another three. Jakia Brown Turner, Bulls 
Bullseye from Three Point Real Estate. And NC State cannot miss nine for nine from beyond the arc. Unbelievable. They're already at their pers they're already at their numbers per game. The inside's not working. Might as well get going from long range. NC State. They're up eight. ACC College Hoops is brought to you by your local Ford dealer and the Works Switch Driver, two-in-one drill and driver. Back in Charlottesville, last day of the regular season for ACC women's basketball. Inside John Paul Jones Arena, our game summary. Look at the three-point differential. The pack hasn't missed. The Cavs hadn't made one yet. Just a terrific job defending right now on the interior for, I mean, NC State has not been able to do anything inside that paint. And that's not what you expect coming into this game where, you know, Lisa Kamein is a post player inside. She only has two points on the day. Koenig has three of those three-pointers of the nine made for NC State. Their season best is 14 made threes in a game that was at Clemson on January 30th. And they are well on their way to equaling that performance at the very least today with this first half performance, despite the fact that Kinane, as you mentioned, Kelly, just two points and one of three from the floor. And they're not able to get her the ball the way that they want to because of the pressure defense along the perimeter by Virginia. Willoughby wide open. And there was a collision between NC State players as they were trying to defend that. I don't know how they got the ball to Willoughby, but an excellent pass and finish. Six points now for Jocelyn Willoughby. Averages close to 20 points per game. Best of the ACC. Jones travels. The high-low pass, definitely working. I said I wanted him to get the ball inside. Yablonowski threads the needle, and look at the collision there between NC State defenders going after the ball. And they hit each other, and Willoughby makes a pay. Both players appear to be okay in the aftermath of that contact, and now NC State produces a steal. Takes it back with Jones. And Willoughby tried to force it on that one. She should have taken that up. Six-point difference. Pack is led by as many as eight in this first half. Kinane demanding the basketball. Sends it back out to Crutchfield. Ten for ten. Unbelievable. You cannot double down on a post if you got a shooter on your side. As well as Virginia is playing, that is an area where they are suffering, clearly. <laughs> NC State is shooting 57% as a team. Renegade Lucas, first three of the game for Virginia. Much needed right now for Virginia to get this crowd involved. A three-point barrage. And now the Cavs trying to open up the floodgates. NC State has already stormed on through from three-point range. Kanane wants one, and she hits it. What was the pregame meal? Can I ask? NC State, what are you doing? <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. It's funny because Coach Westmore was hurrying them out of the gym to get to that meal. Yeah, he sure was. After the shoot around this corner. And what did he say to us? We need to make shots. That's exactly what he's doing. I would say so. They're at 59% as a team after the Kinane three. Kinane kicks it out, but you see Cornegan Lucas, she went in to double on Kinane, who only has two points. And even look at Carol Miller coming in. Yablonowski was over hoping it left Kinane wide open. I, I love the fact of help the helper, but eventually you need to be more concerned about what's hurting you, and that is the three-point shot. Deflected. Attempted save. It'll go out of bounds. And that was Grace Hunter who couldn't get to it for NC State. Look at that stat. Seven different players with a three-point make. That's depth on your team. There are some teams in the ACC that don't play seven players, let alone seven that can hit a shot. 
prior to the shot by Yamorowski, a foul is going to be assessed against NC State. Looks like Crutchfield is the indication. Two oh one on the game clock here in the second quarter. Tom Romy along with Kelly Dale, a member of the 2001 Notre Dame National Championship team. And our outstanding production crew that's been with us all season long for ACC Women's College Basketball. Cornegay Lucas trying to follow the miss. And again, Cornegay Lucas has not back down from those offensive boards. After she misses a shot, she goes up and attacks. Grace Hunter picked up the foul for NC State. We're inside of two minutes to go in this first quarter. Traveling against the Cavs. Fifth turnover of the half. Four wins on the season for the number eight team in the nation, NC State. As Virginia gets whistled. So Willoughby goes to the bench. She has scored six points. Miller is the leading scorer for Virginia. Still on the floor, number one in white, orange and blue. Nine points for Koenig on 3-3. She leads them in scoring, and that is Hunter. Toussaint just didn't keep up with her defensively, went under the screen, and still Hunter was able to turn the corner. Hunter right at her season average. Five points in this game, averages 5.4 per game on the year. For the redshirt senior from Raleigh, North Carolina. And now a break. The run out. Brown Turner comes up short. Yablonowski, the feed ahead to Trois. Crutchfield hustle back. Twa puts it up on the rim. Virginia has 10 points in fast break, and NC State doesn't have a single one. Brown Turner has to recover near the midcourt stripe. Forty-five seconds to go in the second quarter. Kinane on the rhythm turnaround and a soft bounce and it drops for Kinane. We knew it wouldn't take long. And that was well defended too. Anytime you get your post player outside of the paint and she's got to fall away to hit a shot, you know you're doing something well. Kinane's got seven points, three of five shooting. Cornegay Lucas to Toussaint could not calculate the angle. Off the square and here's Crutchfield. Shot clock is off. 15 seconds to go in the quarter and is rapid and well played first half. NC State 11 for 11 on three point attempts. Jones make it 12 for 12 right in front of the horn and what a shooting display by NC State in the first 20 minutes. I've never seen anything like this. Unbelievable. Look at that. Seven different players with a three. 12 for Charles. They're shooting 62% from the field right now. Double teamed. Find the shooter. Kayla Jones knocks it down. Unbelievable. NC State came to play. She made two threes in that first half. Coach Westmore kind enough to join us. And coach. You've been around this game for a few years. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of that three-point shooting in the first half? Bites? Yeah, you know, I've really spent a lot of time personally working on their three-point <laughs> shots the last week or so, and it paid off. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just it's good to see the ball go through the net. You know, we had a stretch there for a couple of weeks where we really struggled. Uh, we've got to shoot the ball well. That's just the way we're built. So nice to hit some shots for sure. Coach, if you don't keep up this kind of consistency from outside, how do you do a better job of getting Kanane some looks on the interior? Well, you know, they're being physical with it. That's what everybody's doing nowadays. And, of course, Virginia's known for doubling the post. So I think she's done a good job of finding the open person, and we've knocked down threes around it. So you got to pick your poison as a defense. If you're going to double Elisa, somebody else is going to get an open look, and today we're knocking them down. So we'll see. 
Coach, thank you for your time. All the best in the second half. Thank you. Go Pack. That is seventh-year head coach Wes Moore, kind enough to join us and give us some of his time. Folks that made the trip from Raleigh enjoyed that first half. we got a lot coming up at halftime. We're going to break down the scenarios and take a look at that bracket for our ACC tournament, which starts next week. Halftime is turned ahead from, head from Charlottesville, Virginia. NC State with a 46-32 lead over the Cavs. in Charlottesville. Some people chose to study today. Others decided to shoot three-point baskets wearing the red and black of NC State. Seven different players. They went 12 of 12 from beyond the arc. Not much Virginia could do as NC State shot 61% in that first half. Tom and Kelly courtside here at John Paul Jones Arena. What can you say? I mean, even Wes Moore was was just couldn't believe yeah, what had happened baffled. in front of him. 12 for 12, it's amazing. I love that he took ownership of teaching them all how to score the, the three-point shot. But now you've got, you know, a decision to make. If you're Tina Thompson, do you stop helping, which is exactly what they've been doing. They've been helping on the post, which obviously they're worried about Kunane. But now I think maybe you see in the second half people sticking with three-point shooters, maybe letting Kunane go one-on-one -on -one inside. But that's, that's what you get when you play NC State. They are so good in every position. There's a reason why they're the number eight team in the nation and they won their first 14 games of the season they have struggled recently but not today in the first half as all those three-point shots were falling we'll see if they follow the advice of Kelly Dale in that second half a lot of emotion on a very special day here at John Paul Jones Arena for the seniors and one of those four seniors honored prior to the game Dominique Toussaint the senior double-digit scorer and a mainstay in that lineup for the Cavaliers. Let's meet this senior, Dominic Toussaint, number four for the Cavaliers. My name is Dominique Nicole Toussaint. Some people say Toussaint, some people say Toussaint. I think all of it is fine as long as you know my name. <laughs> Dominica is a West Indian island, so it's in the Caribbean, but the, more specifically the West Indies. It's in between Martinique and Guadeloupe. So it's like a Creole island, French island. That's why my name is Dominique, because Dominica. So my whole family is basically from Dominica, both my mom's side and my dad's side. The Caribbean part of my family would definitely be those big family gatherings. Uh, my grandma cooking for all of us, sitting around the dining room table, having a great time together. Grandparents praying over you. It's just a Caribbean family through and through. I would say my New York side is just like the swag that I got, I think. My mom kind of had to too, my dad definitely has it. It's just that New York flair that we have as a family. I went to school in Queens. My father worked in Long Island. My mom worked in Manhattan. We all leave in the morning, but we always come back at night and we always hang out. You know, you learn the roots and then you just keep going. Confidence is everything. That combination really made me who I am. My mom is really big on being able to connect to your roots. 2019 was the year of return in Ghana. We visited four different cities. Traveling with my little sister was a little nerve-wracking at first, only because we haven't been alone together in a really long time because I'm away at college. And also because we're on our own. We don't have our parents um, to rely on. So we went on and, you know, we managed. We did a lot of fun things together. and We learned a lot about each other as well. Hearing my name Dominique and being able to explain like, yeah, both my parents from Dominique and my whole family's from the Caribbean, saying I'm a first generation American is a big thing for me. It's a lot of pride. Looking back on it, like, yes, all those experiences are very fragmented in my four years here at Virginia, but they make up who I am and they make up what you see on the court. I'm grateful for it. Wow, she's already had an amazing life. Her senior day here at John Paul Jones Arena, and she's made a lasting impact on this program as well, Kelly. Yeah, I love that she mentioned her swag and her confidence, because that's exactly what I think of when I think of Dominique Toussaint and the way she plays this game. She's so much fun to watch, brings so much energy to this game, but I, t I love, too, what she said about her family, because she's obviously deeply rooted in her culture and in her tradition, and just a fantastic senior in the ACC. Former New York State High School Player of the Year, Back a few years ago, fast forward to her senior year and playing NC State on senior day. When we come back, Dominic Toussaint, the rest of the players in our game are headed to Greensboro next week. We'll talk more about the tournament when we return.
46-32 is our halftime score. The NC State Wolfpack in the lead, looking for the sweep of the Virginia Cavaliers this season. They met earlier in the year, and the Pack won that one as we go around the ACC. Six other games to talk about, Kelly Dale. How about Notre Dame up five on Florida State? You know it's senior day when two of your seniors have 29 of their 35 points. That's Wolfhook and Gillespie. Kylie Shook with the double-double in that win over Virginia Tech. And Georgia Tech coming out with the win against Clemson. And if Duke wins its game, it will be the number three seed at our tournament, which is next week in Greensboro, North Carolina. Join us on your regional sports networks as we begin our three days of coverage beginning Wednesday. We'll take you all the way through to the tournament semifinal matchups. Notre Dame has dominated this tournament since joining the ACC, but this year's tourney should be wide open and we'll probably crown a new champion. But we'll see. Ticket book start at just $99 and include every game including the championship game on Saturday. Now, at this very moment, this is what the bracket looks like. Virginia trying to avoid slipping back into the number 10 slot. They'd have to play on the first day of the tournament. Virginia Tech lost to Louisville today. Louisville's the number one seed. If Duke wins, it will be the number three seed right there. The number four seed and NC State has locked up the number two seed. Yeah, a lot to be played still here today. Seedings may change, but there, that is what it looks like as of now. All, I, all, all you can think if you are any of those teams is you do not want to play that first Wednesday in Greensboro. Georgia Tech is also definitely the number seven seed. They've locked that up. And the number one seed has won the last seven years since the expansion. And Notre Dame has won five of the last six years. Louisville won the other year in 2018. They'll be the number one seed at our tournament. And it is going to be awesome. Although since 2000, just five teams have taken the trophy. Yeah, and you know what my sleeper is? I'm going to call this right now. Miami, sitting in a 13th seed right now. They have Beatrice Montpremier back, the preseason player of the year. How amazing would that be if they could go all the way through that tournament? That's my sleeper. That's my call. I said it. We have the video <laughs> proof. We'll go back to it and refer to it. And we'll see if that prediction comes through. Pack on top of the Cavs at half. Fourteen-point halftime lead for the visiting NC State Wolfpack. That takes us right to our bow. Big moments, and it's three-pointers. Not a hard one to choose in this one. 12 for 12 in the first half alone for NC State. They have been phenomenal. Virginia has doubled the post. Well, they have made them pay from outside. Seven different players have hit a three so far for NC State. Again, their season high was in January against Clemson. And they made 14. You see what happens when they make five or more threes. It's a pretty solid record. And as Coach Moore said, they had been going through a rough patch as far as field goal percentage was concerned. But not today. And I like how immediately when I asked him that first question, he took credit for the great coaching. Yeah. And helping the players with their shooting. <laughs> I think he was joking around. I'm fairly sure. Now, the shot clock did not start. The game clock did. The shot clock did not. And, you know, Tom, you look at this half, and you're not... Virginia has not played a bad half at all. I mean, look at that. 42%. That's not bad. Only six turnovers. You've got more points in the paint, more fast break points, more steals. I mean, they've played a great half of basketball. It has been only their defense on the three-point line that has gotten them this deficit right now couple of false starts to start this second half and third quarter. The halftime advantage belonging to NC State. The record is strong. 20 and 2. So while the officials sort out the clock issue. I can tell you that NC State should it win today sets a school record for ACC wins. They're ranked number eight right now. They've been ranked as high as number four this season. Best ranking since 2000 when they were number three in the country. Wes Moore has done a phenomenal job there at NC State recruiting, developing this program. This is a program with a ton of tradition. Think of Kay Yao and all she did at NC State, and now Wes Moore just has taken the baton and run with it. 
Okay, Yao led the program to four ACC tournament championships, and NC State has not won the ACC tournament since 1991. So while we have a moment, they work on the clock. We can talk about ACC Players of the Year potentially, and two of them are in our game with Willoughby and Penae. Those are two great candidates, and all you see they do in terms of numbers will be number one in the conference and scoring. Well, you got Kira Lewis for Syracuse as well. This is a player that has developed so much over the year, but nobody playing better probably right now than Haley Gorecki. Dana Evans is probably at the top of most people's lists right now because of her consistency and also because of the way Louisville has been able to finish out this ACC regular season. Six straight wins by the Cards after defeating Virginia Tech earlier today to close out the regular season. Cast your vote, Kelly Dale. What do you think? You know, earlier in the year, I, I said Kanaim. I said that was my girl. Right now, it's between Dana Evans and Haley Gorecki. And no disrespect for anybody else on this list because obviously Willoughby has done enough to, to be a player of the year in many people's categories. But Dana Evans, she's, she, I said it earlier, her consistency, but what Gorecki has done with this Duke team has been unbelievable. They weren't even in, on the radar for me early in this ACC play, and she has been outstanding. But those two players going head-to-head -head today, we'll see what this second half looks like. Kanane has not been able to do much, nor has Willoughby because of foul trouble. Now Duke is playing at North Carolina, looking for the sweep of the Tar Heels this year. And Duke prior to its loss at Virginia Tech. Had won six in a row and eight of nine to get back in the race in the ACC. Virginia's sort of done the same yeah. thing. And what can you say about NC State? Although they have they had a situation where they lost three straight home games, which is such a rarity at Reynolds Coliseum, where they've been dominant recently. Even so, NC State is 24 and 4 on the season. I wonder if this delay in play slows down the hot shooting of NC State. <laughs> you know, Wes Moore is thinking, wait a minute, we're 12 for 12 from beyond the arc. We need to get out there and start shooting more. He's telling jokes right now in that huddle. <laughs> Keeping them loose. He has a library of sayings, his yeah. go-to sayings. One of my favorites is, he said this earlier in the year when Alyssa Kanane was having a tremendous game. He said, the rest of the team standing around Kanane like she's a campfire, staying warm. <laughs> or if things are happening fast for freshmen, he'll say, it's like drinking from a fire hydrant. Yeah. So he's got all, he's got all the sayings. Wes Moore, the seventh year head coach, originally from Dallas, Texas, and great success with the program at Chattanooga as well. Let's take a timeout. Back at John Paul Jones Arena, home of Virginia basketball, men and women, since 2006. Although right now we've got a clock issue. The game clock started, the shot clock did not. And the shot clock has not been an issue for Westmore's team, especially today with 12 three-pointers on 12 tries. But look at that, he wins 67% of his ACC game, 76 and 37, Kelly. He's been phenomenal. And as you mentioned before the break, he had such a successful career at Chattanooga was one of the best mid-major teams in the country and then came here and has just continued that success and built quite a program and you look at the young player right there Lisa Kinane only a sophomore and already in the conversation for player of the year he has great freshmen on this team great recruiting class coming in uh, and just a phenomenal head coach They've been to the tournament semifinals the last two years and both times eliminated by Louisville, which is our number one seed. Tina Thompson's in her second year, but one of the most decorated women's players of all time. Naismith Hall of Fame, a WNBA champ, a nine-time All-Star. Oh, and just toss in a couple <laughs> of gold medals, too. I mean, for me, it's, it's okay, if I can, like, equate this, it would be like Michael Jordan coaching a team in front of you, right? You probably were a huge Michael Jordan fan. That's Tina Thompson for me. She, I'm in the era where I watched her play 
I was a post player. I tried to pattern my game against her. Didn't even come close. How'd that work out? Yeah, not, not, not at all. <laughs> uh, I am not in the Naismith Hall of Fame. We'll just say sure. that. Nor am I an Olympian, but she's, okay. she is one of the best of all time. And she's got a great staff around her. You look at Monica Wright right there, who was the star on this Virginia team, the all-time leading scorer at Virginia now on this staff. And Coach K, who was a long time at, at the, the Los Angeles Sparks. And, I mean, just Tina is... She, she's a first name kind of kind of lady Tina, you know, you respect her you love her and her kids play for her. the Olympic gold medals 04 in Athens, Greece 08 in Beijing, China And again we are staring at those clocks which have now gone dormant and dark So we may go old school here at Kelly Dale It's just picturing that mm. little Plugged in. Let's see, what, along yeah, let's see what plan B is. The possession arrow works. Oh, well, it did for a moment at least. That's off, too. I wonder if it's a power issue over at the scorer's table. Well, either way, it, uh, we've got problems with the clock. Now they're back on. And we hope we can rectify this very soon because we had incredible momentum from that first half. Very well played by both NC State and Virginia. We'll keep working on the clock issue, and we'll come back in just a moment. Folks inside the arena anticipating the start of the third quarter, as are we. 46-32, pack in front. We're being told that there is a malfunction with the game clocks. And they may have to utilize the public address system to alert the players as to the time on the game and shot clock. We'll see if that is, in fact, the case. That's Mark Hardcastle discussing the situation with Wes Moore. I mean, it is what it is. There's nothing you can do if that is the case, but I have never in my life seen that happen where they count it down from the PA. Now, I think the game clock is intact and functioning properly because it does say 9.56 on all the appropriate places inside the arena, including above the backboards. Although the shot clock, again, will be announced by a public address. That's what we're being told. Let's see if that happens. And then you wonder, do they go just from 10 seconds down, or will they do the entire clock? We're about to find out. This is a first. I'm learning all kinds of things. So they did have an electrical issue at that scorer's table. So the fact that they've even gotten the game clock back functioning is quite an accomplishment. So once again, the, the shot clock time will be kept manually at the scorer's table, but will be announced from 10 down or so. We'll find out exactly what it's going to be. So Willoughby's going to inbounds it for Virginia, trailing 46-32. We crank up the second half. Tom Rooney, Kelly Dale, our outstanding ACC College Hoops production crew, led by producer Joe Vences, director Ken Neal, technical director Mike Voigt. Crutchfield for NC State. And the crowd is, is getting into it, too. They are already counting down the shot clock when NC State has possession. That's the band over there. You'd love that. Bring your band anywhere, and you've got a great <laughs> cheer section. Brown Turner had to give it up. Here's Jones. That's a three. Make it 13 for 13. They could not ice NC State. I was certain that they were going to come in cold in this second half. And that is absolutely not the case. One off their season high of 14 made threes in a game against Clemson in January. Fast break run for Jones after the steal and the layup. Toussaint tried to go for that, and Jones able to keep it from her with the Euro step. Put it in. First fast break points of the game for NC State. They've scored the first five of this quarter. Willoughby rims out. Canane athletic save on the baseline. Great looks for Virginia. But as you said, all those shots have rimmed out. 0 for 3. Crutchfield. And that is the first three-point miss. Miller at the other end. That's Carol Miller for two. And some more in transition. That's what Virginia wants to get back to. Make or miss. You want to get on the run. That's where you've been successful. 
So officially for the pack, 13 of 14 from beyond 20 feet, nine inches away. And now they've missed two in a row. Kinane, new possession. And I've been watching the potential double team and they have brought it. And that is how the three was wide open. And Ace Koenig was very well defended on that one and still able to drop it down. Now, NC State as a team has missed a couple of threes, but Koenig is not. She is four for four from three-point distance, and they've tied their single-game high on the season with 14 made threes in the contest. Threes all over the place right now for both teams. Second three for Amadine Trois. A Richard freshman from Paris, France. To name. And they're being careful with the double. When she put it on the floor is when they try to come in and double that one. Able to make Kanane miss. Twa wants to calm things down. Inside of seven minutes to go in our third quarter. Twa. You go under the ball screen, and I'm going to make you pay. Amandine Twa. Looking good from downtown. Twa for Twa for Twa. <laughs> Three threes. No, no, I was right? about to say. Yeah. No, was... <laughs> Wait, that's Spanish. <laughs> no, right, exactly. If you want to talk Italian, I can help you out. But otherwise... <laughs> Look at the box out by the red shirt freshman. Twa gets her, or excuse me, that's Miller, gets her on her back and gets the over the back call. So that last foul on Brown Turner, her second. The lead is 14. That's what it was at halftime. 46-32 after NC State went 12 for 12 from beyond the arc. Twa looking for the heat check. This time may have been deflected by the defending of Twa, but either way, she was up in the grill of Koenig and altered the shot. Virginia teammates Jablonowski and Willoughby, a couple of seniors, could not collaborate on that particular play. And they read the defense well. She, they're hedging on those ball screens, trying to ice the ball handler. And Jabonowski makes the wise decision to slip, just can't connect. If you're just joining us, we're having an issue with the shot clock. That's why it reads zero. So it, the final seconds of the shot clock are being announced over the public address system for the teams. Miller runs it down. Cornegay Lucas. Has to be a little off-putting for the players because they will often glance up at the shot clock and it's going to read zero every time they look at it. Basketball players, I mean, and here now you, you hear the announcer. That's the first time we've heard him start counting down. Does nothing for Cornegay Lucas. No problem. Not altered at all. But I was going to say, basketball players are such rhythm players. You know, they, they're used to the way things always are. And, and so any, any change can be unfamiliar and could potentially get your game out of whack. It's going to be a foul on Twa. So we've talked about NC State's three-point shooting and it has been unbelievable. But how about the kick out for three Virginia on a 9-0 run? ACC College Hoops is brought to you by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. And Husqvarna, all-star lawns start with auto mower. The rotunda on the grounds of the University of Virginia with the Cavaliers trailing 54-43. One of seven games in the ACC. This afternoon to close out the regular season, the number one seed Louisville's already posted a win against Virginia Tech, and they will be our top seed in Greensboro next week, Kelly. And right now, Florida State down three to Notre Dame. Gillespie's got 19 points, six boards in that one. Duke 
with a lead. Garecki with 13 points in that one. Duke really trying to secure that third spot with a win. What a run they've made late season to potentially get that number three seed if they win. This is the bracket right now, completely updated. Georgia Tech will be the seventh seed. NC State has already got number two. Louisville's our number one seed. That is certainly the seed you want based on the results of the last seven years. <laughs> I think this could be a year that everything shakes up in the ACC as so many teams have the potential of knocking off those bigger seeded teams. If Virginia can make a comeback and win this game somehow, they could move up to as high as eighth or they could drop to 10th, which means you'd have to play on the first day. The bottom six teams in the standings in the ACC will have to play on that first day on Wednesday and try to win five games in a row. Has not been done. You see the PA announcer with the five up. That means five seconds on the shot clock. Brown Turner, nowhere to go. Oh, it's, pardon me, I'm clearly wrong on that one. But you can understand the confusion yeah. because the table is trying to communicate with the officials, then trying to communicate with the public address announcer who's supposed to count down the last nine or ten seconds or so. And you've got to think that before the inbounds is Ace Koenig gets the shot there, great fake on the backside, but you gotta think before that out of bounds play, the officials must be able to tell the players how much time is on that shot clock. So at least they know if we don't. Well, Koenig now has double figures for the 12th time this season and 55th time in her career. And that includes four three-point baskets for Koenig this afternoon. Foul against the pack. When NC State won on that drought where you saw them lose some games in ACC play, it was Ace Koenig, whose shooting percentage just continued to drop, and that's why she's so important to this team. Coach Westmore calls her our security blanket. When she plays well, we play well, and she just brings that calmness to this NC State team. Turner picked up her third personal foul in that previous sequence. Tony looking for some daylight. Lost the handle at the free throw line. Here's Miller. And they were looking for her off the double staggered screen. I actually thought she could have shot it in rhythm, but instead she tries to go off and into the paint and loses it. Virginia has not beaten NC State at home since January of 2015. And they beat them 71 to 63. We'll let you listen in to that shot clock. Jones the other way. Straight away, Brown Turner. Not enough on it. Here's Willoughby. Taken back by Koenig. Three on two. Deflected. Held ball. Arrow favors the visiting Wolfpack. Virginia has done a very good job at reading the NC State offense. They're, the only problem with their defense has been along the three-point line. Otherwise, they've defended the inside well. They are getting in passing lanes, getting deflections. Just good, tough D all around. Kinane. Crutchfield driving and scoring. Such an athletic play. You got Willoughby in position, ready to take the charge, and Crutchfield avoids getting the charge and still gets it in. That's eight points for Crutchfield. Virginia's working on a five-game home winning streak, but work to do against NC State here in this third quarter. And that's where the ball needs to go, Jocelyn Willoughby. She's got seven points right now, only six shot attempts. As we mentioned in the first half, she sat out quite a bit with foul trouble, but you gotta get the ball in her hands. 
Cavaliers are three and one in their last four game. That includes a win at Virginia Tech. Willoughby and Toussaint both had 29 points in that victory against the Hokies. It was a career high for Toussaint, but I cannot believe with the way that I've seen her be able to score in other games. It was her first game over 20 points. You don't see that very often with a senior whose name you know, as we saw at halftime. People know the name of Dominique Toussaint. However you pronounce it, although today, <laughs> just four points and two of ten shooting, and Toussaint has missed both of her three-point attempts. So try another jumper. Two minutes and change to go in our third quarter. Great interior pass. Jones able to finish. 15 points for Jones. Leading scorer Koenig has 14. They are the double-digit scorers for NC State. Twa and Miller both have 10. Twa coming off the bench with those 10 points. Healy slows it down for the pass. Into Kinane. Reverses direction and gets fouled. Good play call by NC State. You got the horn set. Getting into the high low where Kunane gets isolated inside. Look at this. Jones well defended. And that goes that leaves one on one with Kunane and Yablanowski inside. She picks up the foul. First on Yablanowski. One of the four seniors honored prior to the game for Virginia. Final game of the regular season, last home game. Destination Greensboro next week will be there in full force for the ACC Women's Tournament of the Regional Sports Network. The action-packed first three days of the tournament will take you to the semifinals in Greensboro, North Carolina. Kelly Dale will be providing expert analysis and interviews and courtside reports throughout the tournament. She'll see every second of every game for the first three days. I cannot wait. Tom, best week of basketball. Back wants to run with Jones. Offensive foul to suck. Had the position. And when you're down like this, this is what you need if you're Virginia. Some energy plays from the defensive end. NC State in transition. And then Toussaint gets her feet outside that arc and picks up the offensive foul. Look at that. Just great job getting in position. What an athletic move. Final 44 seconds of our third quarter. Williams against two defenders. Outlet to Ely. There is no rush for the pass. Williams is tough. Cassell. Turn around. Virginia has missed its last five field goal opportunities. Will there be a comeback? On senior day, 2020. Toussaint trying to lead that charge, and she's going to the line. Jones in some discomfort after the collision with Toussaint. Here's where you want to see your team start coming together. That's a great drive. You get a foul, you get to the line, and it's senior day. This is the last time you're playing on this floor for those three seniors you see around the free throw line. You gotta get, you gotta, you gotta have some energy. That's lacking right now for Virginia. Toussaint, one of the all-time best from beyond the three-point arc in Virginia history. Although she is over two in three-pointers today, she does have 129 career-made threes. Foul against the Cavs at the other end. Toussaint also top 10 in assists in the program. She does a great job of distributing the ball. We saw that early on in this game. Virginia overall 
Bob Henry. Great job. Assists, 14 assists on 17 made field goals. This is a team that plays well together. Right at the end of the third quarter, NC State comes up empty, but has the lead, 61-45. Last day of the regular season in the ACC. The Cavs and the Pack for the second time this season. And NC State will have the lead as we head to the fourth. So the Pack will start the fourth quarter with a 61-45 lead. After all, the kids enjoy a walk on the court. We'll head to the Carrier Dome. That roof currently under construction. In fact, the second game of our doubleheader is Boston College and Syracuse, which won at BC in early February. Features Taylor Soul and Kiara Lewis for Syracuse. They're going to shut down the dome after this game and finish the refurbishments and the work on that more permanent roof on top of the Carrier Dome, which has been the home of men's basketball since 1980. Several years ago, the women's program into the Dome. That'll be the second game of our doubleheader. Here in Charlottesville, 61-45. Look at the three-pointers. NC State has matched the season high, making four from three-point real estate. 14, rather. Yeah, they've been unbelievable from long range. Paint points starting to even up. That was very much in favor of Virginia in that first half. But Kanane has started to get going inside. They've looked for her. She's been able to score. NC State was a few more turnovers than we're used to seeing uh, this early in the game. So we told you that Louisville is the number one seed, NC State the number two seed. And as the number two seed in all likelihood, in fact, they will play potentially Duke because Duke will be on their side of the bracket as the number three seed. Florida State's going to be the number four seed despite the outcome of their game against Notre Dame. And so the top four seeds will be Louisville number one, NC State number two, Duke number three, and then Florida State number four. How about Duke making that jump? Early on in ACC play, they started one and two, and Yablonowski gets in that passing lane and goes coast to coast with a finish. week where the number one seed has won the ACC tournament 11 of the last 12 years. Only exception was in 2012. Hunter on the run. No Kunane in there for NC State makes the inside a little less attractive. NC State having to take a really well defended shot on that one. Four of 11 on three pointers for the Cavaliers. That is off of NC State. And we'll stay with Virginia. I would love to tell you how much time is left on the shot clock, but I don't really know. <laughs> and no blame aimed at anyone, but the scorer's table has had some electrical issues. And the final 10 seconds, and there it is, are being announced by the public address system. Will it be offensive foul? According to Jeffrey Smith, who was on the baseline and right on top of the call. NC State does a good job of packing it in the paint. They will send help. And these players are getting in position. How about that? I mean, you couldn't be more straight up and in position. And Willoughby definitely attacking the basket, picked up the offensive foul. Final home game for Jocelyn Willoughby, the senior from East Orange, New Jersey. Look at the hedge by Willoughby. I love watching her defend. Warnick lost the handle out of bounds. The indication is that there are seven seconds left on the shot clock. Watch this defense by Willoughby. Coming off the screen, she switches with Koenig, anticipates it first, and jumps to try to ice her, and then just plays consistent defense she has for all this entire game. 
Never got the shot away. Deflected by the Cavs and now Williams. Virginia not shooting poorly by any measure. 42% shooting in the game. It's just you cannot contend with 14 of 19 from beyond the arc for NC State. 74% from three point. Fight for the loose ball and won by Jones. Hunter. And why not? Everything is going in for NC State from distance. Hunter's come up with a pretty good game. Three of four right now from the field. Seven points, couple of rebounds. She did have double digits, 10 points in the win against Syracuse on Thursday at home for NC State. It's senior night. You love that at this time of year to watch players off the bench come in and contribute. And how about that three? Looking good for Shamira Williams. Just a 25% three-point shooter. But Williams hits that one. Virginia needs to get going. If they can continue to get shots like this, we may be seeing a different last few minutes of this fourth quarter. Cavaliers trying to make it interesting in front of their home crowd at John Paul Jones Arena, 63-52. NC State is led by as many as 20 in this game. All right, here's my call. Willoughby, Yablonowski, and Toussaint, even though she's not in the game, are about to have a big couple minutes. They're in single digits still on senior day. You don't see that very often. They need to come out and play. You're making a lot of bold predictions right? today. I know. Kelly Day, oh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she's tough to stop. They try though. They send doubles at her non-stop. They foul her. She gets to the foul line. Such a good post player. The named double digits now with 10 points. 24th time this season she has done that. 47th time of her career. And she's a sophomore. Two on one potentially. Twa gets into the mix defensively. Kanane trails the play. Koenig, 14 points. Jones has 15, leading scorer for the pack. I'm going to guess the shot clock is winding down. And it was. Out of the corner, it's Twa, and it's a three. And that's a 10-point game. This crowd better start getting into it. Great opportunity in front of them here with five plus to play. Three for seven on three-point attempts for Elodine Twa as that rims out to Willoughby. Chance to cut it to double digits. Twa again. Angular rebound off the heel and run down by Williams. Now the reset is to 20 on the shot clock. Which if you're just joining us, a bit of a malfunction with the shot clock, so it is being announced by public address. It's a five right now. Twa hoists the shot. Kanane rises for the rebound and clearance. That was a big possession for Virginia to come up empty. Yeah, they needed a, they needed a bucket there. And they're settling for jumpers right now. They need to attack. Koenig wants three. The box out by Yablonowski did not get the board, but contained Kanane. And Williams has been able to pick up a couple key rebounds late in this game. Willoughby. Inside of four minutes to go in regulation. Deflected Yablonowski, turn around. Does not get the bounce, could in the save. And he almost felt like Yabonowski hurried that a little bit. She heard 
the PA announcer counting down, and that's where that could play into a little bit of her psyche when she gets the ball. The name to Hunter. Twal almost got her hands on that one. So Kanane was fouled on that last shot attempt. Amandine Twa gets them within 10 with a three-pointer from the corner. ACC College Hoops is brought to you by Myrtle Beach Golf Trail and Coyote Tractor. We dig dirt. Back in Charlottesville on a perfect Sunday afternoon. Right now the pack with a 10-point lead that met, led by as many as 20. Late the fourth. Game two of our doubleheader. Upstate New York and a commemorative dome tin on the final game before they close the dome for further renovation and construction on a more permanent roof. Popcorn, oranges, chocolates, whatever's in those tins, I want one. <laughs> I know you do. Boston College and Syracuse to follow us. I'm surprised they're not going to hand deliver one of those to your home. With... Hopefully, hopefully somebody brings one to the uh, tournament next week, maybe. <laughs> How many games do you think you've We're done? We're going to need some snacks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna the answer is not enough. Love traveling to all, uh, all of the sites in the ACC, especially John Paul Jones Arena on a Sunday afternoon to close out the regular season. By the way, Boston College having an incredible year. They've set the school mark for ACC wins in a year with 10. Syracuse is 9 and 8, and we're still trying to decide some seeds for the tournament next week. Elisa Kanan and her teammates will definitely, I am 100% sure, be the number two seed. Their highest seed since 2000. Back in 91, they were the number one seed at the tournament, but did not win the finals. They lost in overtime to Virginia. So both of these teams trying to make a run next week. We'll see. I can't believe it's been so long since NC State has won it. It feels like it had to have been less time than 91, but they'd love to do that again here in 2020. They did make the finals in 2010 as Toussaint hits the jumper but lost to Duke by 10. Toussaint is so good off that ball screen. One dribble off the shoulder of the ball screen, wide open in the mid-range. Way up at the other end, Brown Turner for NC State. Brown Turner has had a quiet 10 points in this game. Hit a couple threes, has some assists as well. Virginia has three ACC tournament titles to its credit. They won in 1990, 92, and 93. There's a player named Dawn Staley who was <laughs> here over those years. Debbie Ryan was the coach who, was in, who is in the audience. She was out in the court at halftime. Staley, two-time player of the year in the ACC, and now the head coach of South Carolina. He's doing pretty well in the women's league as well, number one right now, South Carolina. So just 2-11 to go now in the fourth. And once again, we want to thank everyone who's been with us all season long for ACC Women's Basketball and your regional sports networks. We'll take you to Greensboro with us next week. Please join us. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage. That's 11 games in three days we'll have for you. So many people, so many women and men work so hard to bring you those games. We'll have it for you next week from Greensboro. We'll be joined by Kelly and myself. We'll be joined by Evan Leffler, who will host. Kelly will have the sideline reports and analysis. Jen Hildreth, LaChina Robinson, Debbie Antonelli will all be there, along with our talented production staff, which works tirelessly throughout the week, and all season for that matter. Salute to them, and salute to all our viewers. Such a great group of people that call these games, and this is one of the best conferences in all of women's basketball, and these ladies out here make it a lot of fun to call.
Virginia lost in the second round to Syracuse last year after beating Boston College in the first round of the tournament in Greensboro last year. 20th time that we go to Tournament Town. They're going to be busy in Greensboro for the next few weeks with the women's tournament, the men's tournament, and the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament for the men. Carnegie <laughs> Lucas, basket and foul. It's been the seniors and the freshmen, but the freshmen have stepped up big in this game. Carnegie Lucas, how about that? Drive into the bucket. Tell you what, the strength and conditioning coach needs some serious props. He or she, whoever it is for Virginia, this is a team that is so strong. And even the, the guards who get inside, I've been watching Williams, Cornegate Lucas, I mean, they are, they have got some unbelievable strength. Regardless of what happens at the tournament, NC State will be in the NCAA tournament for the fourth straight year under Westmore. And they've hosted the first two rounds the last couple of years. Made it to the Sweet 16, both in 2019 and 2018. Work to do in Greensboro next week. Work to do to finish this one off as well. Cavs refusing to go away. An eight-point game. It won't fall. But free throws coming up for Kayla Jones. Third on Toussaint. And Toussaint's defense on the ball had been spectacular. And it wasn't until Jones got into the paint and the help came that she ended up fouling. So a great heads up play by Jones of attacking. I love that in those late game situations of making the defense either foul you or let you go all the way to the bucket. That's some good IQ. Ball it up with Kanane and she lays it in. Off the miss from Jones. And the smile from Kanane. Ever present on this young sophomore. How important are those offensive rebounds off of a free throw? It doesn't happen very much. The tip goes right into the hands of Kanane, who goes off the glass and just barely rolls in at the end. I mean, the hustle, the great box out, first of all, by Yablonowski, but the fortuitous tip by that scrum of players, and it ends up with Kanane. Kanane has a double-double today. It's now 14 double-doubles in ACC play. Thirteen points, thirteen boards. Double-figure rebounds for the fifteenth time this season. And the fourteen double-doubles on the season for Kanane. And it all started with the three-pointers. I've never seen a first half like I did in this game. 12 of 12 in the first half for NC State. They have 14 now of 22. Their inside game wasn't working, but their outside game was better than ever. Coach Wes Morris said coming into this game, we just need to make shots. And that's exactly what his team has done, shooting 53% from the field on the day. Four and three pointers for Koenig right in the middle of that huddle with Westmore. Kinane with a double-double in both games this season against Virginia. And that's 7.8 in conference play this season. For the full body of work, it's even more. They average over eight threes made per game, best in the ACC. 14 today ties a season high for NC State. Back will be number two in the seating. Louisville has eliminated them the last three years. The only way they could play Louisville would be in the championship because Louisville's the number one seed. Cornegay Lucas will be at the free throw line. One for one at the line so far for Cornegay Lucas in our game. Again, coming up, Boston College and Syracuse. Check your local listings for the second game of our doubleheader as we close out the regular season in ACC women's basketball. I am so curious to find out how that game ends. Those are two teams that have been hot 
in the latter part of ACC play. And that will be a battle today. Seven games on the schedule today. Louisville has posted a win. It's the number one seed at our tournament. Notre Dame has just defeated Florida State. But Florida State's going to be the number four yep. seed. Pittsburgh and Miami at the half. Your prediction about Miami to make a run at the <laughs> tournament. Georgia Tech is going to be the number seven seed. That's already locked up. Clemson the number 15 seed. Duke with its victory, number three seed. And here are the brackets up to the second. And those top four seeds solidified. They've got the double bye. As I said, it helps to be the number one seed. Yeah. 17 of, of the 17 <laughs> of the last 19 years, the number one seed has won the ACC Women's Tournament. So. How about Notre Dame coming up with a win at Florida State on Senior Day with that group of seniors playing for the Seminoles and this Notre Dame team that has not won a lot of games in the ACC this season. What a finish for yeah, Patrick they'll, McGraw. They'll finish eight and 10 in conference play. Clemson the number 14 seed, Pittsburgh the number 15 seed as we make our way to Greensboro next week. Starting on Wednesday. Final 40 seconds of the fourth quarter. Foul in the backcourt by Virginia. Credit to the Cavs, never back down from NC State, but the pack just too tough after leading by 14 at halftime. Yeah, I thought that Virginia has played a great game of basketball, and their only lack was defending that three-point line, and it happened in that first half, and they just weren't able to recover. But they've been tough. They've played the entirety of this game with high energy, with efficiency. We talked about those assists, 16 assists on 23 made field goals. And they've played great defense inside the three-point line. 41% shooting for Coach Thompson's team this afternoon, but Across the way for NC State, 53%. 14 made threes, 12 made threes in the first half. And that's just hard to contend with when you're playing the number eight team in the nation. Cavs are working on a five-game home winning streak as well. Next week, you got it. Greensboro, destination, ACC Women's Tournament. For the 20th time, it is the 43rd annual. ACC Women's Tournament. Notre Dame is the defending champs. They beat Louisville in the title game, which had defeated Notre Dame the year prior. Irish have won five of the previous six tournaments. Louisville won it in 2018 for head coach Jeff Walls. The amazing number one seed stat. The only exceptions, Maryland and North Carolina. And Louisville is the number one seed. Yablonowski fouled on the interior. And we'll be there with you every step of the way for the first three days. Once again, that is 11 games. So get to your regional sports network and check out all the action. And we'll see if Kelly Bayo's bold predictions <laughs> come true. I can't wait for that. I mean, look at I'm going to hold you to it. I'm gonna throw, did you throw Georgia Tech in the mix as well? I, I your, didn't. I sure could is that have. One of your bold predictions? Yeah. I'm going to throw that in there too. Okay. All right. That's yours then. Mm -hmm. Mine's in Miami. With the return of Beatrice yeah. Mom Premier, I mean, who I saw last Sunday return against Boston College. 25 points in yeah, that one, shook, right? Yeah, shook off the rust immediately. She hadn't played since early January right. against Georgia Tech. Who came back. I mean, you think before she went out, this was a team that was in the top 20 in the country. Preseason player of the year at Beatrice Mont Premier. She was out with a foot injury, and I don't think anybody thought that she'd be out as long as she did as she was. And Miami just continued to sink and could not come up with many wins. So with her back, and hopefully with a more seasoned Miami team, maybe they could make a run. I don't know. They will play on that first day, though, which is yeah, it's going to be tough. You got to win from Wednesday to potentially I mean, Sunday. But. I told you when NC State made the finals in 2010, they lost to Duke. They became the second team in conference history to win three games in three days to get to the finals.
Wow. Well, you got to do more work <laughs> now because we're 15 teams strong for the seventh year. Louisville in the league for the sixth year. So with 15 teams, you trying to come out of that first day is virtually impossible. But the way the season has gone, who knows? Your, yeah. guess, your guess is as good as mine. And and you think, too, I mean, this, this would not be a low seed, but I like Duke's chances as well. And I am as surprised at what's coming out of my mouth <laughs> as anybody because I haven't called a game early for them in the season. I did not think that they would have finished as a number three seed in this conference. But with the emergence of Liana Odom, that is what changed the game. You got consistency in Gorecki. She's always phenomenal. You have some good young players, but Liana Odom has been a game changer, and Duke has been rolling. I think the turning point for them was January 12th at home against Virginia Tech. They got that game to overtime. We did that game. We did. Coming down we did. Like 10 years ago. <laughs> Kelly's looking at me like, like we, we did, did that. We called that game together. <laughs> you were reluctant to agree, but I know 70, we did. 72 67 yeah. in overtime. They won that game and they have played so well since. And don't forget the second game for our doubleheader from the Carrier Dome. If you're headed to the Dome for the game, get your souvenir tin. And get an extra for with Tom Wormy. Yeah, with popcorn and oranges and chocolate, whatever's in there. Boston College and Syracuse, the Orange won in Chestnut Hill earlier this season, the first meeting between the teams. Those are two old-school Eastern basketball rival rivals going head-to-head. -head. I played against those two in the Big East back when I played 100 years ago. 01 national championship team from Notre Dame. Kelly Deo. 100 years ago. Either look right? for a <laughs> mid-range jumper or pass it to Ruth. <laughs> 22 seconds to go in our game. A layup, Tom. That's just a layup. Not the, Ruth, a the Ruth is Ruth Riley, by the way. <laughs> Who, by the way, I've said it before on, on air, I think Elisa Kinane is a young Ruth Riley easily. High praise. High praise oh. from Kelly Dale. Player of the year. It's going to be the pack as the final seconds come off the clock in Charlottesville. Win number 25 this season, 14 ACC wins, and that is a new school record, 75-64 on the road for Westmore and NC State. Well, Virginia put together 40 minutes of great basketball, but that team right there, NC State, and the way they shot the three ball in that first half, 12 of 12, then they took advantage inside with Elisa Kinane, who finishes this game with 15 points, 13 boards. She had three assists as well. That, by the way, is one of my favorite parts about her game is the fact that she's a passer from the post position. But she came to play, and NC State comes away with this win today. Beats the 1985 team. Debbie Antonelli was a part of that group with 13 ACC wins. They also did it. this year and then added the one for the school record today here against the Virginia Cavaliers. Kinane got the double-double as well. That is now 14 double-doubles and that's the best of the ACC. Tina Thompson's team is playing some solid basketball as it heads to the ACC tournament. They had a five-game home winning streak. It was snapped today against NC State on senior day, but you saw some spirited play from both of these clubs, and we're going to see them when we head to Greensboro next week for the ACC tournament. No, the I think 43rd annual <laughs> ACC Women's Tournament. Yeah, I think they're playing some great basketball, and, and this was a game that we did not think that Willoughby and Toussaint would come out and have single digits, but that's the case today. So once again, NC State is a winner here in Charlottesville. Let's go to game two, Boston College and Syracuse.